when I started on the racetrack, there weren't many women involved in racing. And uh, of course, I wanted to uh, get the respect of my peers. Today, there's a lot of women trainers and a lot of women involved in racing. But, but when I started, there wasn't. Um, and I guess I tried, well, I tried harder. And um, I never had a resentful feeling. I, I always got along well with all the men that were in the business. Primarily, they were all men trainers. But I got along well, well with everybody I was with, and, and I loved it so much that everything just kind of fell in place, and I got to make a lot of friends. 24 artists were each given an identical blank form and a survivor's story as told to a counselor from Sarah's Inn. The artist had the honor, the challenge, and the awesome responsibility of bringing these painful, and emotional stories to life. One of the, the things that was interesting about working with these stories is that you don't have really have any visual clues. You don't know what the, the woman looks like or the details of her life are sketchy enough to, to guarantee her anonymity. So an artist is used to having some visual clues. And uh, here I didn't realize that our battalion chief had called uh, my house looking for me. They wanted me to come back to the scene. And uh, when I walked through the front door, I was greeted by a hug from my 10-year-old boy and uh, uh, my 15-year-old son also and my wife. And uh, they had heard about it. Uh, they were wondering where Dad was on a Sunday morning uh, because I, I wasn't, uh, wasn't home, of course. But, uh, you know, they were very proud, and still to this day they are. Uh, they still talk about it, and uh, I'm glad they're going to be part of uh, this ceremony. I'm happy to have a long history and memory of Mundelein and happy for a chance to talk today. I actually grew up just a few miles from here. I finished grade school at St. Jerome's, went to the Immaculata, taught by the BBMs, going to high school in 1928. I passed by the structure that was going up as Mundelein on Sheridan Road, watched it go up brick by brick. And when the building itself was finished and they wanted to dedicate it, they found they didn't have a big enough band to welcome Cardinal Mundelein. So those of us who were at, at Immaculata, and I played the clarinet, put on Mundelein uniforms and welcomed the Cardinal at Mundelein's major dedication. The pain and overwhelming shock this community has suffered is clear following what some refer to as relapse, while others are concerned that it marks the rebirth of a violent era that once plagued this community. What the future holds is uncertain. However, we are hopeful that the community will one day be able to utter a phrase consistently echoed throughout the community. Shootings, they just don't do that anymore. Los tiroteos ya no suceden aquí. May mi het kan ying tan ter kun ik lao nai ti hang ni. Because our district residents, they just don't shoot anymore. Gunplay? We won't do that weak ass shit no more. Like other infectious diseases, there are occasional cases, but violence is rapidly moving into the past. These tears I cry, this pain inside. Oh. Their enemy, the Algonquin Indians, called them the Iroku, rattlesnakes. The French added the Gaelic suffix wa to this insult. Their name became Iroquois, or Iroquois. But these Iroquois Indians weren't just one tribe. They were a confederacy of six tribes, six different peoples gathering with a common interest, peaceful survival. Like those original inhabitants of Iroquois County, Illinois, the new settlers would gather from different places, 
eventually coming from all over the world, fur traders and missionaries from France and Canada, farmers from Germany, and canal builders from Holland, some following waterways, some fleeing wayward souls, some seeking rich soil, and others looking to tame the wild wetlands, but all looking for and finding the relatively peaceful prairies of the Midwest in Iroquois County, Illinois.